Are you struggling with acne, with cysts on your ovaries, with excessive hair all over your body while the hair on your head is thinning? PCOS sucks in more ways than one, but there are a couple of supplements that you can use to help you manage your high androgen levels. Hello my lovelies and welcome to another one of my videos in which I'll be discussing some supplements with you to help you manage your high androgen levels, your high testosterone when you have PCOS. I have done a video a couple of years ago that was on glucose management when you have PCOS and if you haven't watched that one yet, definitely go check it out after this video because managing your glucose levels, your insulin resistance is really the first step. If those things are unmanaged, it feeds into the high levels of androgen, the high levels of testosterone. So you can see if you can't manage your glucose levels, it can be a bit of a waste of time, money, and energy to supplement with these androgen reducing supplements. Of course, you can use them side by side while you're also continuing to work on your insulin levels and your glucose levels. The first thing is green tea and green tea we can drink, but you can also buy supplementation with high levels of green tea extracts in capsules. Now, I did mention this one in a previous video as well because green tea is just miraculous stuff for overall health. It reduces glucose levels and helps you with insulin resistance, but it also raises sex hormone binding globulin, SHBG, which gobbles up all the extra testosterone that you don't want. If you're estrogen dominant as a result of all of this, it will also gobble up all the extra estrogen. However, green tea does contain caffeine, and if you're struggling with adrenal stress, adrenal fatigue, or hypothyroidism as a result of long-term stress or lack of sleep, then using caffeine is not recommended. So I'm gonna leave it up to you what the best decision is for you. Maybe the first half of your cycle, you only use the green tea, or since there are hosts of cultures that drink green tea throughout their entire cycle and have healthy pregnancies, maybe it's fine for you to use, but I wanted you to be able to make an informed decision as always. For the next supplements, we need a tiny chemistry lesson. We have a super interesting enzyme called 5-alpha reductase. And this enzyme, 5-AR, is responsible for converting testosterone to dehydrotestosterone. And you might think, I don't care, dehydro, whatever, just testosterone, just get that stuff down. Well, if you realize that dehydrotestosterone is five times more potent uh, than testosterone is, uh, then I'm sure you're going to want to get the dehydrotestosterone down, more so than your regular testosterone. And then if you know that studies have shown that polycystic ovaries contain the 5-AR enzyme four times more than healthy ovaries, then you realize that you are more prone to having more of the testosterone type that is more potent. So it's kind of cool that we have some supplements that can get the 5-AR down. And the first one is saw palmetto. And at first I only knew this herb as um, something that's really helpful for the prostate in men and also for low libido or performance issues. It's fantastic for women with PCOS as well because it inhibits the 5-AR and then gets your dehydrotestosterone down. Another one that does this is GLA, gamma linolenic acid. And this is actually an omega-6 fatty acid. And while most omega-6 fatty acids are promoting inflammation, this one reduces inflammation. So it's a double whammy. It reduces your 5-AR, reducing your dehydrotestosterone, and it reduces inflammation, which is an issue you'll be struggling with if you have cysts in your ovaries. While we're talking about fatty acids, let's also discuss omega-3. Omega-3 is super important. I am saying this more and more and more. And not so much because omega-3 in itself is important. Yes, it is. But the most important for our health is that 3, 6, and 9 are in balance. Our foods in the West often contain quite a lot of 6 and 9. And as a result, we are relatively deficient in omega-3. And that sets us up for more inflammation. In a video I did last month on balancing your hormones, I talked about omega-3 as well and how you can replace your cooking oils with more omega-3 ones, so go check that out as well if you're interested. We also love omega-3, not only because it lowers inflammation, but also because it raises, again, the SHBG, so gobbledy gobble all the extra hormones that we don't want to have. I did touch on estrogen dominance and you know, not everyone that has PCOS struggles with excess estrogen. 
But if you do, it's very understandable because what happens is ovulation is often delayed quite a bit or it doesn't happen at all. And all this time, that means that estrogen can just go around and thicken your endometrial lining, the lining in your uterus. And as a result, you can have quite heavy and painful and long periods as well once they do show up. So tackling estrogen dominance can be quite important if you're struggling with PCOS. And I've got a bunch of videos on dealing with estrogen dominance as well. I do find that a big solution for my PCOS patients is therefore often to make sure that they ovulate or they ovulate earlier. So this is why I've dedicated this month's Patreon exclusive content to homeopathic remedies to help you jumpstart ovulation. So if you're interested in that video, then have a look at the link down below that takes you to my Patreon page. Another thing that reduces your 5AR is a healthy gut. And a healthy gut is also important to lower your estrogen if you are dealing with that. Because if you are dealing with constipation, that means that you're holding on to estrogen and then the estrogen can make you hold on to the weight and it feeds again into the glucose management and the insulin resistance. So making sure that your gut is healthy is super important, both for the 5AR being reduced and for lower estrogen levels. So if you're not on probiotics, but you are struggling with digestive issues, I highly recommend probiotics as well. Then, since we're talking supplements anyway, I thought I'd throw in a couple of other ones that you might have come across online, and I'll tell you if I think it is useful in PCOS or maybe not. The first one is licorice, or also called glyceriza. I love, love licorice, not just because I'm Dutch, but also because I am a recovering adrenal stress patient, and licorice feeds your adrenals. Now, it's quite important to have healthy adrenals for a healthy hormone balance. However, licorice and glyceriza are not recommended in pregnancy. So if you're trying to conceive, this might not be the herb for you to take. Another one that you might see mentioned and that I absolutely love because it's helpful from anything ranging from asthma to Alzheimer's, including PCOS, is quercetin. And the reason it's so helpful is because it lowers your glucose levels and it helps you take up a zinc. However, again, it's contraindicated in pregnancy. So maybe lay off the quercetin unless you're under the care of a naturopath that is specialized in things like this. Another nice one is N-acetyl-L-cysteine. And this is because it is anti-inflammatory, especially when it comes to skin issues. So when you're struggling with acne, you may get this prescribed by your naturopath. But again, contraindicated when it comes to pregnancy. So maybe this is not for you if you're trying to conceive right now. Here's one that you can take, ubiquinol. I love, love, love ubiquinol because it is super important for healthy cells and for a good quality DNA. So once that egg does drop, you want to make sure that it's in the best shape possible as well as your man's sperm, of course. So while this is not necessarily targeted at your androgen levels, it is all about egg quality and we need your eggs and the sperm to be in the best shape possible once your fertile window does open. An interesting one is vitamin D. Good levels of vitamin D overall are important for healthy hormone balance. And while it has not been directly associated with PCOS, it is quite interesting that studies have shown that women with PCOS or women struggling with obesity often also have low vitamin D levels. So if you haven't had those checked out, I do recommend that. And then we've got two other things that I do see circulating around the internet quite a bit when it comes to PCOS. And the first one is DIM. Now, personally, I haven't got any experience with DIM, but I do know that a lot of practitioners have great success with DIM because apparently it would be lowering androgen levels and estrogen levels. There isn't a lot of study material when it comes to this. That doesn't mean it's not helpful. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't be taking it, but I would recommend that if you do use it, that you use it under the care of a practitioner that has plenty of experience with this. Because I don't have experience with it, I wouldn't recommend it. But I thought it was important to mention because I do see it show up every now and then uh, in patient consultations and also in the fertility community. Another one of those that does circulate around a lot is a Vitex. And I have done a video and some articles on Vitex before because while yes, it can be helpful for some women, I think it can truly mess up your hormone balance even further, your cycles become crazy if Vitex isn't appropriate for you. So before you take that, please do check out those resources and make your informed decision. 
And if you're interested in more videos on treating your PCOS naturally and then falling pregnant, do click on the playlist on your screen right now. And in the meantime, see you in the next video. Bye.